What's up guys, welcome back to the channel, it's boy Shiggy, as Yuji, you're doing it. It's, I'm so excited to be making this video because it's yet another informative video. And I love informative videos for my beginners and for my intermediates and for my experts. Hurts. Yes, I'm so excited to be making this video because I miss doing sit down and talk videos, you know, like it's just like I miss them. I miss them. That's how the channel started and I would love to not neglect any of those because they're very, very, very important and they're very, very informative. And also because we're actually in an epidemic in Toronto, this, uh, the coronavirus is driving people nuts and we're sort of like in self-quarantine right now, which is pretty crazy and, and it's just so nuts. But guys, I just wanted to bring awareness to the coronavirus. Please Please, please, please be aware that your technician's life matters. So when you're shooting Kodak in 120, please be aware. Do not lick the the, the, the sticky residue to stick your phone together because your technicians are going to have to touch that and also work with that. Yes, they should be using gloves either way, but also from them using those gloves, the virus will touch the gloves. And if they use those gloves or place those gloves somewhere else, the virus will be on that table. And apparently this virus lasts up to like nine days so that's why I was bringing awareness to this guy is that you need to actually use a rubber band to tie up your film to keep it nice and sturdy keep a set of rubber bands and also try to use some tape some cellular tape some tape so you need to use some type to tape it up and to make it all safe and beautiful but guys be aware be safe hand sanitizer wash your hands at all times when you're gonna open the door without washing your hands, please make sure that you wash your hands and you get a disinfectant and to clean the knob, okay? Like, that's how the virus spreads and we're not trying to make it spread or make this virus a thing. I don't know, but anyways, just be safe, keep proper hygiene and everything will be bueno. But I will say guys, this is going to interrupt the way I release videos and it's just very unfortunate because I don't wanna catch this virus. I don't wanna, like, you know what I mean? I don't wanna spread it through my family. So I'm gonna try as much as possible to stay inside and to also just do sit down and talk videos like this so do expect a lot of sit down and videos for the rest of the month and until this whole coronavirus thing is all solved and done with but with that being said guys let's get straight into the video today's video is going to be how to use a light meter and very old light meter how do you use one of these guys everybody always asks me what type of light meter should you get don't be afraid of buying old light meters guys this is why I'm making this video you do not need to purchase an expensive light meter you could purchase this guy so this guy got it for about $50 that is super cheap for what it could do it is a bit bulky it comes in its own pouch but if you're trying to save money and to just get your photography your film photography business going this will be perfect yes you could also use your phone but I do not trust the app as much as I trust this light meter because this will give me consistent light readings this won't give me consistent light readings all the time this is a lot more reliable I would trust this a lot more and it will give you a faster workflow guys what do you need you just need an ambient reading light meter which means it's gonna read for the whole entire scene this is very important and you, you don't need anything expensive this works and all light meters guys do not be intimidated they'll work the exact same way so how does this guy work the Minolta flash meter 3 50 bucks you can get it online here is the light meter this is how it looks when you turn it on so when you have the light meter in hand you turn it on and you want to put it on f-stop number setting over here that's the setting you put it on there's just a knob over here and remember guys all light meters pretty much work the same way if you get an actual analog one that you have to spin you'll only be able to read your f-stop and that is all you really need and that's what I'm going to show you guys again to keep it simple I'm not going to touch on any relevant things so we're going to put it on ambient mode over here on the mode there is cord mode I guess when you put the cord in here and you're shooting studio photography you can plug in the sync port here and for that you'd either need to put it on the cord mode but I'm pretty sure it will work in ambient mode as well but if it doesn't I haven't used this guy again for um, actually shooting in studio and using the cord so I'm not gonna touch on that I want to touch on basic things but I'm pretty sure a hundred percent sure if you put it on cord over here if you put it on cord mode over there wait over here 
it will use the same port and it will actually fire the second you'd be pressing the button to read the lighting but let's just talk about ambient mode right now you have your ambient mode now you pick your ISO let's say you're shooting 400 ISO film you set it over here to 400 ISO there's a little button over here to move it to 400 so you set it on 400 whenever you see ASA that usually means your ISO reading okay so this is throughout all the cameras you will see either ASA or ISO it's the same thing now all you're gonna have to do is to change what shutter speed you want to shoot at so let's say I'm shooting street photography I want to shoot at 1 25th of a second so 1 25th of a second is pretty good you can freeze motion let's say that's what you want you want to shoot at 1 25th of a second and at 400 ISO now you just press the button and it will give you your f-stop so let's say I want to shoot over here the light meter is in the it's in the it's in the light so now it's reading f eight here this is f4 this is um f5.6 at 400 ISO and 125th of the shutter another thing that you need to know guys this needs to be facing you this little bulb over here needs to be facing you I don't know why if you know why please comment down below let everybody know why it has to be facing this way I haven't done enough research to know why this bulb needs to be facing this way but I know that's how you're supposed to do it but again with that being said please comment down below if you know why educate me educate everybody else let's just all help each other grow as a community so with that being said you just press this button and it will give you your f-stop so that's how you actually use a light meter so here's one big tip that I actually recently learned that actually affects your reading wearing white clothes or bright clothing I heard that actually disrupts your reading because the light is bouncing off your shirt and affecting the little white guy over here and giving you an inaccurate reading so be aware of what you're wearing when when you're using your light meter I think this applies to all light meters and again guys this is ambient reading light meter there's nothing fancy about it it's not spot metering it reads for the light that it hits so wherever your light hits it will read for that whole scene so how is this beneficial it's beneficial for old cameras like mine guys this camera is Pentax Spotmatic it was a beautiful gift to me this camera has a broken light meter so I would use this guy to read the light let's say I'm shooting I would use that guy if you're shooting 35 mil pretty much what you want to do is to remind yourself is to set the ISO you set your ISO dial over here where it says ASA remember ASA means ISO <laughs> for all the beginners you set your ISO and your lens has the aperture reading that you want to do so with that being said you set your ISO and you set your shutter speed again remember just like the light meter right just like the light meter you set your ISO and you set your shutter speed and now you just play around with the aperture Aperture, the aperture and then after that you just fire off so the beautiful thing about this is let's say you want to change your shutter speed you just got to take the shutter speed out and then change it and your f-stop will change according to the scene last scene you just read at okay guys so that's how to use this light meter okay but now we're gonna talk about another light meter the light meter in your camera I wish I could show you guys how it looks in here but it works the same way so if you're using the Canon AE1 through your light meter you will see a pin if you're using the Canon AE1 every camera is different some cameras that will use like a little needle at the bottom to show you what aperture you need to shoot at so with that being said guys, that's how you use a light meter you just pretty much set your ISO and set your shutter speed and click away and then that's pretty much it that's how you use an old light meter so with that being said guys if you like this video please leave a like and a comment and also subscribe to the channel if you want to subscribe to the channel real quick without interrupting the video there's a little square over here hover your mouse over there and hit the little square that says subscribe on it and you will subscribe and the video will continue thank you guys again for tuning in please leave a comment down below if I missed anything please guys please a lot of you guys actually learn from each other comment down below add to whatever I might have said explain what that chord thing is explain what EX is 
is. My videos, guys, are for everybody. I'm no expert, guys, so we all wanna grow as a community, as photographers, as the film community. So if I missed anything, please comment down below. I'm new to this as well as you guys. I'm learning as I go and as I find this information. So please educate me down below. Educate everybody else that's gonna be watching this video. Add to what I have said. But with that being said, guys, follow me on Instagram at shop by Shingy. Check out my portfolio at shopbyshingy.com and check out the brand shopwaybetterco.com. I'm actually wearing a sweater from the brand right now. And I'm also wearing a shoot film cap. If you want to support me guys and also help the growth of the channel, please go buy some merch and it will help me out a lot as a creator. But last but not least, follow and hashtag at WePhotoGods to get featured. Well, this whole week I'm going to be focusing on that since I'm not going to be able to go out and shoot and do a lot of stuff. There's going to be a lot of features this week. And yeah, that's my way of giving back to you guys and to also get you guys some exposure and to share your work with other incredible photographers. Thank you guys again for constantly supporting me i'm so thankful we're about to hit 4,000 subscribers let's hit 4,000 subscribers by the end of this week thank you guys again for constantly supporting me i love you guys you guys are incredible it's the boy shingy as usual you already know what it is peace out